Welcome and thank you for joining today's State, Local, Tribal, and Private Sector Policy Advisory Committee meeting, also known as the SLTPS PAC. To receive all pertinent information about upcoming SLTPS PAC meetings, please subscribe to the Information Security Oversight Office's Overview blog at isu-overview.blogs.archives.gov or by going to the Federal Register. All available meeting materials have been emailed to registrants. Please mute all audio connections when you are not speaking. This is a public meeting. Like previous SLTPS PAC meetings, this will be recorded. This recording, along with the transcript and minutes, will be available within 90 days at www.archives.gov slash ISU slash oversight hyphen groups slash SLTPS dash PAC slash committee.html. Let me now turn things over to Mr. Bill Fisher, the Acting Director of ISU, as well as the Acting Chairman of the SLTPS PAC. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 26th meeting of the SLTPS PAC. I'm Bill Fisher, the Acting Director of ISU. I'm also the Director of the National Declassification Center at the National Archives in my permanent position. At this time, I do not have any news to share about when a permanent director of ISU will be coming on board. I will now turn it over to my designated federal officer, Heather Harris Pagan. Thank you, sir. I will now begin attendance. I know that our acting chairman, Mr. Fisher, is here. SLTPS PAC Vice Chairman Rich McComb. Department of Energy member Mark Hynoski. DOE's alternate, Tracy Kindle. Uh, President, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Thank you. DOE's other alternate, Natasha Sumter. Nuclear Regulatory Commission member, Tara Inverso. NRC's alternate, Daryl Parsons. Hi, Heather. I'm on. Thank you. Department of Transportation member, Sidoni Dunham. Thank you. Department of Defense member, Michael Russo. Office of the Director of National Intelligence member, Lisa Perez. Present. Thank you. Federal Bureau of Investigations member, Jacob Zockert. FBI's alternate, Scott Gerlach. Department of State member, Kate Connor. Good morning, I'm present. Thank you. State's alternate, Darrell Hicks. Department of Justice member, Glenn Bensley. Defense Counterintelligence and Security Agency member, Derek Broussard. DCSA's uh, alternate, in, in Scott his place. Uh, Thank you. I'm sorry? Uh, Scott Cronin is the alternate that attending for Derek. Thank you. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency member, Nitin Narajatan. Private Sector member, Jeffrey Imstall. State Mountain Region member, Kevin Klein. Present. Thank you. Private Sector member, Cameron Burks. State Mountain Region member, Chris Palmer. Present. Thank you. We request that everyone identify themselves by name and agency if applicable before speaking each time for the record. I want to remind government membership of the requirement to annually file a financial disclosure report with the National Archives and Records Administration's Office of General Counsel. The same form of financial disclosure that is used throughout the federal government, OGE Form 450, satisfies reporting requirements. If you have any questions, please let us know. We've had a few changes to the PAC membership since the last meeting. Megan Tubner, our local East member with the NYPD, has reached the end of her term, as has Mary Michelle Schechter, our local East member with the Nassau County Department of Health in New York State. Keith Minard with DCSA is retiring. Jeremy Stroka, representing the Midwest in Iowa for state matters, withdrew from the SLTPS PAC. Chris Palmer, 
our state mountain member with the state of Utah courts is a new member. Some of you may also know our alternate designated federal officer, Robert Tringali. He is leaving us for retirement later this summer. Additionally, we still have eight out of 12 slots that are open membership in addition to our vice chair position. If you have any nominations, please bring them to our attention. For those departed members, thank you all for your contributions over the years. We look forward to continuing the work you have done with new representatives. The minutes from the last meeting were finalized and posted to the ICU website on September 29th, 2023. I will now address the items of interest from the September 20th, 2023 SLTPS PAC public meeting. Several members mentioned the frustration of what the reality is for clearance processing versus what DHS states when there is no log jam. Is anyone from DHS on the call that can speak to that? All right, it looks like DHS wasn't able to make uh, make the call. Um, does anyone have any questions that we can pass on? Hey, Heather, Kevin Klein, uh, the GSAC. Mm -hmm. uh, DHS did brief us um, the beginning of the month um, about their uh, in in INA getting the local clearances, state and local clearances done, um, and they've they've stepped up their their processing times, uh, added some resources. Uh, we we did get some feedback from them on on what they were doing, and we're we're appreciative of the efforts to uh, start addressing that backlog. Okay, great. I appreciate that, Kevin. Thank you. Hey Heather, um, this is Don from CIA. I'm, I'm just, I'm not on this subject, but I just wanted to tell you, I, I didn't hear our name, so I, I just want to let you know we're on the call. I apologize. I've got it. Thank you, Don. Um, are there any questions from the public? Candice, do you see anything in the chat or on the phone line? I don't, but if you do have a question, you can press either pound two if you've connected by phone. You can post your questions in chat here on WebEx. You can also use the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. Thank you, Candice. Um, just wanna do one more check to see if anyone from DHS is on the call for the briefing since they were the only briefers today. Okay, uh, we are now at the point of the meeting where we ask for SLTPS PAC members to present any new business that they have. Anyone? Members of the committee, your lines are open. You don't need to request to be unmuted. All right, um, Mr. Fisher, it looks like DHS is not on the call. So um, if you want to go ahead and close out the meeting, uh, this satisfies the requirements for a public meeting. Hello, Heather? Yes? Hey, this is uh, this is Juan Estrada. I, I, I could hear you guys, but I wasn't able to um, to get through. Um, so I, 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 am, I, am I too late? Are you guys concluded? Um, I, are you going to be briefing for Mr. McComb? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I was trying to get, um, I, I don't know what happened, but uh, I could hear everybody speaking. I just couldn't get through. Uh, and I'm sorry. I apologize to everybody. Uh, Mr. McComb wasn't able to make it. Uh, so, again, this is Juan Estrada with DHS uh, OCSO. Um, and I, I do have some information to be able to present. Is, is this a good time now? Yes. Okay. Uh, again, my apologies. So, I, I did hear you speak uh, the question about the backlog. I, I do have some information in regards to the backlog, and then I have a couple of points that um, that I, I just wanted to, to present to the. So we were tracking a total of 215 uh, backlog cases uh, since the last pack, 19 of which have been granted an interim secret clearance. Uh, 11 are undergoing a SAC check, and there's still 139 pending. Uh, we put a uh, little bit of a tiger team together to try to. Um, put put effort and force behind uh, the, the backlog, and and so we we partnered up with different offices within DHS 
Uh, we, we still have a long way to go, but I, I do see a lot of movement going forward uh, in, in meetings with PSD and, and the DCSO here at, uh, at DHS. Uh, again, uh, we're, this, is, this is a high, um, high initiative for us, and uh, when we do have a couple of, of uh, task force in place to kind of try to, to tackle this backlog, I, I, I did hear a couple of individuals mention that, um, that we have briefed in the past a couple of of movements, uh, and, and that's true. Uh, and we'll continue to move forward in tackling these uh, these backlogs for this. Um, so these are the numbers I have right now. We were we were track, tracking 215. Um, we still have 139 that we're looking at right now. Uh, there's going to be some instances where we're probably going to have to have some individuals um, renominate folks, or at least validate the nomination of that. And that's what we're currently going through right now is, uh, is reviewing all the nominations forms that were pushed to. Uh, through to DHS. So, any any questions from the group on that? Okay. And so, uh, there's a couple of key points that DHS also wanted to brief. Uh, and again, my apologies. I don't know what happened or why I couldn't get through. Uh, but so, uh, from SLPPS Security Program Management uh, clearance numbers, DHS currently has approximately 7,231. SLTPS personnel with DHS sponsored security clearances. 88% of those are at the secret level, 12 more at the top secret level, and this includes uh, CBP, CISA, uh, DHS headquarters, FEMA, FLETC, uh, and ICE. Um, so we that those numbers are as of a couple of days ago. Again, that's uh, 7,231 uh, cleared personnel. Another program management. Uh, Point that I wanted to bring up is that uh, DHS, uh, our office, is actually the certifying official to the secure rooms at the fusion centers that support the INA mission. Uh, we we go out on the, about a triannual basis to to these locations. There's 85 locations that we do compliance inspections on. Uh, so we scheduled 20 for this year. So I just wanted to brief that we have already completed seven for this fiscal year, uh, and we see no issues with completing the rest of them. Um, there's there's a couple of, uh, of findings that we're seeing out in the field that's uh, more of administrative findings, but DHS sees no issue uh, from these locations um, during our inspections. I, I, there's also three initiatives that I wanted to to bring to the to the group. Um, as we all know, the issues that happened up in Massachusetts kind of had everybody relook at, within their own programs on their their clearance process, and because of these events, DHS launched a department-wide review of the personal access to classified national security information. This security review includes partnering with the various lines of business, such as uh, the Chief Information Officer, Chief Human Capital Officer, Chief Procurement Officer, and the purpose of this initiative is to enhance the department's wide clearance validation standards and to prevent unauthorized disclosure. Uh, we're anticipating a final report to come out in August of 2024, and I think that's going to line up with the next PAC meeting. Uh, so we'll have some, we should have some results from that report uh, to be able to present um, if there's any any gaps that we identified within our own program uh, or expected around August of 2024. We also uh, launched a, a new training platform for our SLTPS community. Um, in the past, it was a pretty laborious tasking to email, you know, over 7,000 individuals um, a PowerPoint presentation for their annual security refresher training. So we are utilizing the um, uh, an e-learning management system that INA has uh, for their individuals. Uh, so last year, DHS uploaded over 7,000 clearance holders into this new platform. Um, and we were successfully able to to provide that uh, that training to the SLPPS community uh, from a technological perspective um, and get away with the uh, the validation of uh, did you complete the training yes or no so uh, DHS has now launched that that initiative and we expect um, all SLPPS clearance holders to be in the system by the end of this year and then last but not least we are. Um, DHS initiated a policy review of the implementing directive for Executive Order 13549. Uh, DHS is following up with the OGC regulatory affairs to enter into rulemaking. Um, DHS will keep all PAC members updated of any progress made and when the final decision has been made, 
In regards to the implementing directive, the implementing directive is a really outdated document that uh, really is the policy driver for a lot of the decisions that are made. Uh, so we're looking to bring that policy up to uh, to current date, uh, and we'll keep the PAC uh, identified and notified as uh, when changes are expected to be made on that. Um, obviously, we're going to be working with the with the PAC on that as well. So we'll keep everybody. Uh, again, I apologize for not being able to get through earlier, but uh, any questions for, for me? All right, Heather, thank you. Thank you, Juan. Do we have any questions for DHS? Candace, anyone in the queue with questions? We have a, a couple of questions from Lee Watson. Um, I'm going to unmute your line if you'd like to ask those questions yourself. We can read them from chat if you would prefer. Lee Watson, you're unmuted now. Hey, thank you. I think when you um, when you unmuted me, the system spoke over you, so it was hard to hear. So, yeah, I just have uh, three questions, may maybe for DHS or maybe for the broader group, relative to um, how this works in the field at more of the state or regional level. Um, so, I, I just I guess go through them really quickly. Uh, I'm Lee Watson with Forge Institute. We work with the state of Arkansas and most of the critical infrastructure in our state to robust uh, cybersecurity protection. So my first question is, I'm wondering if there's an opportunity uh, for ODNI to help normalize the idea of using secret and TS facilities in the field for discussions or participation in various uh, virtual VTCs on the high side without having to implement a co-use agreement. Um, the capability for this varies greatly outside of the NCR. Um, my second question is I'm wondering if there are strategies that look at uh, deeper high side collaboration in the field with local trusted relationships, again, both kind of at a state, uh, state government, city government, as well as uh, the, the major critical infrastructure companies. And then the, the third question is just really kind of an expanded on that as to across the various departments and agencies, you know, could, could we build a list of the value proposition and the concern specifically from the council's offices as to the reasons to share classified information, what forms, uh, types, methods, programs, uh, existing collaborations does that take? So as to really understand what best practices look like and the alignment of benefits uh, for both the federal government as well as the, the various SLTPS organizations in the field. Hi, this is Lisa Perez from ODNI. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Hi, um, I didn't capture all of the first question. I'm sorry. Can you please repeat that that first question? Sure, Lisa. I don't have access to the to the um, the platform, so I can't see what what you wrote. I'm sorry. For sure, no worries. Yeah. So the so the question with ODNI was, you know, the the ICD 705 uh, policies and the co use agreements uh, work really well for uh, SSOs with more formal engagements. But from a sort of no access to systems, just using a skiff for discussions or participation in a VTC, the I'm wondering if ODI and I could help sort of normalize, uh, standardize that practice across the country. It's um, it's it's not the same out here in the field as it might be at the NCR. Does that make sense? I think so. So it sounds like something more so not particularly scheduled or planned. Um, so right. So normally when there are events, these it's easier to have these agreements in place. But it sounds like potentially these are sort of more unplanned events um, 
and you're looking for more fluidity fluidity in making it possible to utilize those gifts for this? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, uh, you know, if you look in in 705-2, the co-use agreement stuff, it, it outlines um, this pretty well, but it's not always a practice that's been done a whole lot and it's happening more um, in, in states across the country. So being able to set some additional clarification, you know, or some material that says, hey, you know, if they're cleared, you can use it, uh, that they don't have to have access, you know, to an information system in order to be on a BTC, just some sort of practical operational guidance uh, at, at maybe a more detailed level, uh, I think would be would be helpful. It's something that we've we've overcome here. Uh, but I, but I talked to colleagues again, outside of the coast and that, that practice is increasing, but it's not been as, as fluid or standardized as it has been in DC. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I can, I don't have an answer for you today specifically, but I can certainly take a look into it and talk with the appropriate individuals here at ODNI to see if there's something that can be put out and we can just have this as a follow on action. Is that possible to add that, Heather? Uh, yes, no problem. Lee, are you good with that answer? Oh, yes, ma'am. That's great. Thank you. Great, both. great. Are there any other questions? Candace, any other questions in the queue or chat? There are no further questions that I see. Okay, Mr. Fisher, I turn it over to you now to close out the meeting. Thank you, Heather. Our next SLTPS PAC meeting is scheduled for July 10th. July 10th, 2024. As a reminder, all SLTPS PAC meeting announcements are posted in the Federal Register approximately 30 days prior to the meeting, along with being posted to the ISU blog. Meeting adjourned.